There's a chance of maybe 30 guys being there. If there is, there could be a big firefight. It was night at their base in southern Afghanistan. The SEALs were receiving final instructions from their team chief for a mission that would start in just a few hours. But that's it. I'm going home to see my kids. You guys are going home to see yours. We're not going to their plan was to go after a mid-level Taliban commander, but new intelligence had just come in that compelled them to switch targets at the last minute. A possible location for this man, Rosie Khan the most powerful Taliban commander in the south of the country. The SEALs knew he was the man financing and recruiting Taliban and Al-Qaeda fighters and bringing them over the border from Pakistan. We flew in with army pilots from the National Guard right into the heart of the Taliban insurgency. As we approached, people in the village would be able to hear the pounding chopper blades so the SEALs prepared to take fire and brace for impact. The SEALs immediately surrounded the village to stop anyone trying to escape into the nearby mountains. We got any update from the Apaches? The team commander was in radio contact with his men. I want to get a couple of snipers up on the high ground there and there just to look down. See a guy up on the mountain there. What's that? See a guy, 12 o'clock from me, just up the hill, about 100 meters up the hill. He's walking up the hill. They'd spotted a lone man heading away from the village, but no one knew then if he was the person they were after. The Apaches dropped flares to mark the man's position. We've got to get him. That's probably him. All forces, it's important that you hold your positions at this time. We're going to take him out with the Apaches. But before the team commander could give that order, he lost contact with the Apaches. So the SEALs on the ground returned fire and killed him. Well, can you tell us about the man who's down? The man, the man that's down right now appears to be the primary target. What would it mean if you really did have this guy? It would be, it would be huge. It'd be really huge. We've been looking for this guy for two and, years. And uh, five one, you can start. Uh... The seals moved through the village, expecting further resistance. Mitigate risk as much as possible. If we need to shoot that compound, you let us know. We can do it with the Apaches. But uh, use offensive frag grenades. Use whatever you need. But don't walk into an ambush of them. Their job is to root out enemy fighters from the innocent people in the village. But any time they're fired upon, the seals automatically detain all the men. They're not cuffed. They're not cuffed. Call some guys up and get them in here. They ain't been cuffed. They ain't been searched. Some of them are cuffed. Some are not. I want them all cuffed. They shot at us. Whenever they shoot at us, we cuff them. An assault team secured each house, but they didn't find any other fighters. By now, the SEALs had brought the dead body down from the hill. What's the tattoo looks like? Looks like our man. He had six frag grenades on him. He had five, no, six AK-47 mags on him. He had, uh, I think, a nine-millimeter pistol. He had 10,000 U.S. dollars. And then he's got a stack about half an inch thick of Pakistani rupees. And that is an extreme amount of money in this, in this type of environment. In an isolated, isolated little village in the middle of nowhere like this. Have you been able to identify him? Yes, we have, we've identified him. We, we found letters on his person that were addressed to the exact individual that we were targeting. We feel 100, like 99% that this has to be him. Rosie Khan had become a legendary outlaw in southern Afghanistan, where American forces had been hunting him for more than two years but he'd always managed to escape. The SEALs said the death of Rosie Khan would cripple enemy operations in this part of the country. When you come to take down a target like this, do you ever wonder if you're going to find someone else like Osama bin Laden? Oh, that'd be sweet. Yeah, you always think about that. You think you're going to get lucky. You come in, you bust in, there's UBL hanging out, and uh, you catch him. All the locals asked to identify Rosie Khan denied knowing him which seemed unlikely in such a tiny village. Each detainee was fingerprinted and their DNA added to a portable database that's used all over the world. It contains profiles of potential terrorists, like this man who gave the SEALs false information. When they ran his fingerprints, he turned up on the database as someone else. So while the other men were cut free and released, the SEALs took him back to base for further questioning. 
There would be little time for the seals to relax. Back at their tented compound, they had to prepare for the next mission. That meant cleaning their weapons, a constant battle against the dust that gets into everything, and testing their rifles at the range to make sure the sights are properly aligned. Just two days after killing Rosie Khan, the SEALs were on the attack again. They'd heard Rosie Khan's lieutenants were meeting in this remote village. They potentially may be in this compound, so they're probably trying to regroup themselves and uh, get some leadership established. So we're trying to take advantage of the opportunity and going in and uh, either capturing them or killing them also. But if these guys are smart, if they've learned anything by now, they won't try and run. Right, that's why we always have to be cautious because they could be inside potentially setting booby traps or doing other things. That's the reason I got the snipers up there. They've got their optics out, looking inside the compound, trying to get as much information as they can. The seals cautiously approached, but once they got inside the village, they found mostly women, children, and old men. There were no obvious signs enemy fighters had been there until they started searching. What are you looking for? Looking for anything electronic, uh, batteries, wires. Any kind of bomb-making material as well. Do you ever find weapons in these boxes? Weapons, opium, yes. knives, yes. RPG rounds. That's exactly what turned up in this search. RPG rounds complete with good. grenade launchers. Effective. These rocket-propelled grenades are a sign that, although everything looks peaceful and normal in the village, when you scratch the surface and start to search around, you find evidence that there have been people here who are not just simple farmers. When they questioned people, the SEALs found out they'd missed the men they were after by just a few hours. So was this a wasted effort? Oh, no. It, they're really never wasted efforts because when you come in here, what you do is you disrupt. Like, we know that they've been watching us while we've been here. So they're ever-presently, they're, they're sitting around trying to watch what's going on. The they're more, watching us now? Uh, yeah, most likely. The SEALs frequently bring along a civil affairs soldier whose job is to help win over the locals by handing out basic items and finding out what aid is needed in these poor villages. Okay, well then what we want to talk about now is stuff that we can help his village and, and he can tell us what kind of things they do around here. The message is, help us and we'll help you. <laughs> Which town has the most bad guys in it? The SEAL's role in targeting terrorists is a specialized part of the broader military effort here to help stabilize Afghanistan. How many missions is this for you now? 58. 58 in five months. But if you had to think about one thing that was important for people to know. I would, I would want them to know that this place is still dangerous. You know, you don't see it on the news all the time. Iraq's a very dangerous place. But there's a lot of fighting still being done here in Afghanistan.